NASA says that right now is a splendid, critical opportunity to focus on the world Venus. This follows the new disclosures of possible life on the planet. If you somehow wind up investigating NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space agency calling Venus a planet of judgment. In the meantime, Mars became our primary objective. Such careful naming of the main planets wasn't normal during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending costly missions to Venus. The shocking planet showed practically zero potential for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the USSR. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand why. Join us as we examine the declassified photos from Venus, taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was significant in more ways than one. Not only did it shift the global direction of the world, but the breakdown of the USSR also sealed away many secrets. The fact that the Soviets had a deep penchant for keeping secrets, from running the most furtive intelligence organization on the planet to being mysterious about their true capabilities, suggests that extraterrestrial contact was one of those secrets. The former superpower holds many untold mysteries. Before the U.S. surpassed most planetary missions in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and failed space missions, its most notable focus was on the extremely hostile planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus as Venera, which is also the name of the mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. In a way, the Soviets decided to utilize their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the whole obsession with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets want to use the planet's surface as a potential power station? Or were they maybe expecting to colonize the planet? After looking for any signs of activity beneath the surface, the question remains, why were the Soviets so focused on this brutal planet as they carried out these missions during the Cold War? They weren't entirely open about their goals. In fact, everything we know about the Venusian missions comes from declassified and unarchived information. Nevertheless, after so much effort, it's challenging to pinpoint what the Soviets were truly looking for and whether they ever uncovered the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once, or even twice, but many times. That's true. The Soviets launched 28 costly rockets toward the planet. Moreover, 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while eight actually landed. Such complex missions put the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more focused on satellites and innovative technology than on searching for life on other planets. Their attention was on Mars, which, in turn, wasn't particularly unusual or especially bad. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts to its name. The USSR became the first nation to achieve a soft landing on another planet, returning pictures and sounds from the surface of that planet. In fact, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment, a long time before the US. So why do we rarely hear about such achievements? Well, remember what we said about the Soviet penchant for keeping secrets. That is only one of many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. In 1992, the iconic agency was decommissioned following the collapse of the USSR, and the program had to be revived under a new Russian identity, Roscosmos. Many of its original records were either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer as to why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into Venus's atmosphere. Still, we can make the most reasonable guess. Maybe the Soviet decision to explore Venus was more about cost-effectiveness than anything else. It's not to say that the space program didn't recognize the planet's real potential. They were looking for reasonable water levels, sunlight, radiation, and the general qualities of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been incredibly challenging to evaluate Venus' high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, many astronomers don't believe that the hostile planet could support life. The temperatures there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. In addition, due to its thick atmosphere, the air pressure on Venus is roughly 90 times that of Earth. However, there are still ongoing advancements, 
and to ignore the USSR's contribution to the exploration of Venus is to revise history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth exploring. Even though fueling the space race by looking at other, more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't entirely out of the question, it was more costly than sending probes to Venus. Everything essentially comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the hostile planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such massive differences in distance result in huge contrasts in cost. Had the U.S. not been the world's largest economy, it might have never even explored Mars so easily. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were risky and had significant technical gaps. Clearly, the rockets weren't prepared to cover huge distances. Moreover, the agency had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. So, it makes sense why the Soviet space program chose a more economical and relatively closer mission that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move kicked off the space race and kept its momentum. What's particularly interesting is why the U.S. focused on the moon rather than Venus. NASA had a series of failures. With its Venus missions during the 1960s, and thus the U.S. space agency hit a roadblock known as the Venus Curse, Every time they launched a probe into Venus's atmosphere, it failed. This was precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and the Soviets were determined to win the space race. The best strategy was to take advantage of two distinct opportunities. It was a quiet yet decisive approach. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as its first victory in the space race accomplishing something its main rival had failed to do. Despite the Soviet Union's limited resources and wavering government, they repeatedly launched missions to Venus to secure their leading position over the U.S. Unlike NASA's focus on the moon, this strategic decision wasn't without animosity. Furthermore, clever propaganda was used to cloud their major failures with Venus. The American government was prompted to investigate the USSR's fixation on the planet, with the media branding Venus the evil planet, while Mars became humanity's destiny. These names didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate their superiority over the Americans, and they succeeded in doing so. The Venera missions are nearly forgotten in modern history, but despite their early difficulties, these missions were exceptionally sophisticated, advanced, and ambitious. At the start of the space age, the Venera missions led the way. Back in the 1950s, the Soviets began testing the designs and technical details of the probes. Over the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program ran alongside a fierce Cold War, the Soviets focused on improving their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the U.S., which proved to be incredibly valuable. It allowed them to build larger rockets designed to break through high altitudes and cover vast distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned rockets while the Soviet academic community worked on a series of calculations and evaluations to make precise navigations for the Venus missions. Behind the scenes, their Mars programs were also running. Nothing was more important than developing advanced instrumentation for these missions. This led to major breakthroughs in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully land on the planet's surface. This accomplishment escalated the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by failures and setbacks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite their victories, the USSR managed to send successful probes into Venus's atmosphere. The only point of contention with this approach was the limited design capabilities. The Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most advanced probes of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering efforts allowed them to achieve the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most remarkable decade in the history of space exploration. Without a doubt, the U.S. tried to develop similar launch strategies. 
So, why did the Soviet agency choose simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you need to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. The probes were initially launched to study the planet's surface. And that's exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly, the probe successfully entered Venus's atmosphere. The Soviet program continued with Venera 5, but this wasn't just a repeat of the first launch. The second probe was specifically designed to collect detailed data about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets wanted to endure the challenges of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait long for answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about progression and improvement. It was about ensuring that their plans and advancements were up to date. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. For the second decade of the Venera missions, the Soviet Union planned to carry out exploratory missions. The most astonishing and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus's atmosphere, it became the first space vehicle to send back data from another planet's surface. By this point, the planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures had already been recorded. The Soviets were also trying to record Venusian sounds. The next major accomplishment for the program came in the early 1980s when Venera 13 surpassed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture panoramic images of Venus's surface. At the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to collect similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the first country to recognize Venus's significance, the Russian space agency has revived its aspirations for Venus missions. Venera is an upcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venera represents Venus in Russian. It is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, with plans to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of present or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable to study Venus's environment in detail. The legacy of the Venera mission extends far beyond their technical achievements and global significance. These missions, started by the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human creativity and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, the Soviets persevered in their quest to uncover the secrets of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and inhospitable. One of the most important aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of unmanned probes to study planetary conditions and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's orbit and laid the foundation for our understanding of planetary science. The data gathered by the Venera spacecraft provided crucial insights into Venus's extreme environment, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Additionally, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration including the development of heat-resistant materials, reliable communication systems, and effective landing techniques. These accomplishments contributed to subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological importance, the Venera missions also had significant cultural and political ramifications during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding with the Venera missions was not only about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The global community closely followed each Venera mission recognizing their significance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus's harsh environment. In addition to scientific instruments, 
the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface. These photos revealed a rugged landscape dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing scientists with valuable insights into the planet's history and development. The panoramic images taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus's surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and challenges. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or encountered technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The harsh conditions of Venus, temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, presented enormous engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nonetheless, the determination and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies around the world, including NASA's upcoming Venus mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Venera mission plans to build on the accomplishments of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere, surface, topography, and possible signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a cooperative effort to unlock the remaining secrets of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.